the regulations from the current program. There's a set of regulations for the overall structural fund. Structural funds is about a third of, of the budget. I'm sorry to disappoint people. I'm not going to talk about the, the, the agricultural funds um, today or any day. Um, so this is about a third of the budget. There's an overall set of regulations, and there's particular regulations for the different funds. The two funds that, that we tend to be most interested in are European Social Funds, which Sandra had mentioned before, which is about human resources, about training, training for employed and unemployed. And the other fund is the European Regional Development Fund. I know region is probably not the word we're supposed to use these days, but it's again, it's place-based. Um, but it's not purely on human resources, it's about everything. It used to be bridges and roads and so on, it's now business support, um, a whole range of activities and trying to pull together um, a set of things that will make a difference to, to an area. So the regulations, um, that's the thing that, that came out in draft in October. It was due out in June and, and, and my understanding is that almost at the last moment they got um, more or less an agreement that the different departments um, in, in Brussels, the different directors generals, we're going to work much more closely together. So the different funds um, now should be much more similar to operate and, and it should make some of the financial things and so on easier. So this is the, the, the sorry it's a bit dog-eared, this is the, the overall draft general regulations and there's um, much thinner versions for ESF and ERDF. I think they were put together in a bit of a rush when they finally said they were going to fit together because if you read them, they don't quite match. Um, there's a few things that are written into one but not the other. I'm sure that will, will get tidy. So we've got the general regulations and, and for England, the two main ones are, are ESF and ERDF. For some of the worst off countries, there's the Cohesion Fund um, and there's other bits um, around pulling people together um, around aspects of different countries, but I'm going to focus mainly on, on ESF and the IDF at this point. There's a lot of stuff um, in the regulations here, and I've pulled out odd pages from this, and, and, and some of those are in there, and in, in the pages you've got. Um, some of this I'll come back a bit later on. There's quite a focus on community-led local development. The idea that if you're actually really going to make a change on the ground, you need to involve local people, you need to involve disadvantaged groups. I'm sorry, this is obvious to you, it's not obvious to everyone. Um, and you've got to come at something which works in partnership, which, which brings people together to do things. Uh, if I go back far enough on Merseyside, we had something called Pathways, which was about pulling people together to do things. There's been a lot of activity on it. We had local strategic partnerships a few years ago, which was the same sort of thing. You get together in an area, work out what the problems are, work out what you can do, come up with strategies and want to deliver them. A lot of this has been happening over the rest of Europe. We were involved um, firstly with, with um, DG Regio, does, does one of the funds, um, in looking at community-based activities. And more recently, um, DG Employ, which looks at the social fund, um, did quite a big study, looked at about 14, 15 different countries, and looked at how they developed um, community-led um, development. So there's, there's, there's quite a bit on this. I mean, what, one of the things is the Commission is, is so keen on this that they want to put extra European money, a higher intervention rate on, on community-led development. I'll, I'll come back to that in a bit. Keeps referring to smart, sustainable and inclusive growth, which goes back to the uh, overall Europe 2020. We've got different regions. Um, We've got a little map in a, in a minute or two when we get on to this. Um, what we used to have is most of the money went off to the worst off areas, those with GDP less than 75%. This has changed now, and there's going to be some flexibility in some parts of the UK. This, I think, is going to be a bit of a challenge as to how we deliver things, in, in certainly across England, in the current programme, um, and probably quite a lot of opportunities if we want to use it. So transition areas, if you want to write the key word down. Um, there's a whole set of things about how much you can do of this. There's ESF, at least 20% around inclusion. 
that there's a, a different rate of, of European social fund, the human resource fund, um, in the transition areas as opposed to the more developed areas and so on. Simplified eligibility rules. Um, I used to get laughs when I talked about it becoming simpler. The last few years, there have been a number of studies saying we can't continue as we are, we, we can't do what we've been doing on the European side. The, the, the key bit that's happening is, is people got burnt in the last programme and, and didn't, certainly in the UK, didn't do um, proper checks on audits until almost the end of the programme and then they were retrospectively trying to sort out what was going on. So this programme, um, those of you who have been involved in, we've, we've been overrun by people who think they're auditors and think they know how to audit. And, and there's been an enormous amount of time checking vast detailed receipts and so on. And there have been a number of studies which have said, actually, this is not proper auditing. This is not giving you a good idea of what's going. It's just generating more work for people. So what's been said is what we've been doing is measuring the money we're spending. And we assume if we've spent it, we must have delivered the results. But actually spending the money doesn't mean that you've delivered anything. So what they're talking about in the next programme is to get simplified and better quality accounting procedures. But then to concentrate on the outputs and the results and, the, and then the impact. So we're actually looking at not so much whether we've spent the money, but whether we've actually made a difference. This, to me, is going to be something that is really important for the sector. One of the things that will happen, assuming the regulations are, are approved, is that the member state, our government for instance, before the programme starts, will have to say what it's going to do with the money and how it's going to measure it. So it's going to create so many jobs. It will know because this is what a job is, or it's going to bring more people into employment. It's going to work with, with more excluded groups. And of course, once it said what it's going to do and what it's going to deliver, we well, you know what happens next in a few years. It's going to be right. Have you done it? So there's going to be a lot more focus on, on, on what's happening rather than whether or not you've spent money. And within that, uh, again, I can go in more detail if you want, they're talking about lump sum payments. Um, they're talking about standard rates, standard costs. Um, they're talking about proportionality, so you shouldn't have to do the same amount of, of checks if you're doing a, a, a £30,000 project as opposed to a £10 million project and so on. They've tested quite a lot of this out. We were doing a citizens project some time ago, and essentially they said, well, it's basically around running a few events. So we're not going to look at anything else you're doing. We're assuming you have to prepare for an event and so on. And what we'll do is look at the number of people that turn up to the event and we'll give you a rate depending whether they're from the UK or somewhere else. And you then have to prove that they've turned up. And by the way, we'll spot check just to make sure you're not making the figures up. And then the payment is not based on every subcommittee, every meeting, everything you do, or every penny you spend. It's very simple. You say, here's the event, here's proof of the event, this is the number of people turned up on the calculation. Similarly on ESF at the moment, um, you can look at indirect costs. So they say, well, once you, 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 the money, standard money that you send out, other costs like rent and rates is going to be a percentage of the rest. So we don't want to see your rent or your rates when you're running the programme. We're just going to put the percent in and it comes out. And it's much, much simpler. So, sorry to go on, but the simplification, I think, is, is really key to a lot of this. one thing to yeah. um, I think that's important is that um, you're absolutely right that they're recognising that we need more simplified systems, but what they also point out in the regulations is in, it's, it's about NGO access, that in particular NGOs need to have a much more simplified way of accounting for money, and they're talking about smaller projects and um, you know something quite different from what we have, particularly in this country at the moment. I think there's quite a lot in there that is NGO specific, which is which is very encouraging. Yeah. yeah. Just just the one kind of proportionality is a is a, it's such a significant challenge. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be a really brilliant program if we hold to to the sort of.